Hey everybody, it's Simon Cooney, your art sherpa, and this is day 14, what, of acrylic April. So for everyone that's still here, oh my gosh, congratulations. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi guys. So today I'm going to show you step by step how to paint this adorable uh, pair of children on a rainy day wearing very colorful rain gear all in a puddle. It should give us a lot of opportunity for... Uh, fun artistic expression, introduce a bunch of fun techniques, and really get our creative juices like sparked back up on the middle of our journey of Acrylic April. If you check the description below, you'll see a link to our website. And if you go there, it will give you the extra printouts and the reference photos, any extra video explanations like how to grid it in, how to do a value study, all those kinds of things will be there. And you can just go there. It's all free. It's just waiting for you if you need it. Also kind of an update, um, the calendar on our website, if you're trying to see what's coming up, if you click the picture on the calendar, it will also take you to a video page. So those make that search feature a little bit easier. And of course, there's always the search feature. So all of the stuff is super findable once you embrace the website. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm just kind of ready to jump into this pair. I, uh, I'm a little, I had a little bit of travel, which is why we're a little delayed today. So everybody in the main printer, pinners, thank you very much. It was so good to see you. Um, but I'm like, I got to get back into my acrylic April mindset, as does everyone who is in pinners, doing acrylic April to so all those brave people who are like, I'll just do two paintings a day. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Let's just jump in. Okay. That was weird and funny and rambly. That's you. <sighs> yes. Weird, funny, and rambly. Describe your art teacher. Weird, funny, and rambly would be, would be pretty accurate. So what... <laughs> What? I've just noticed you, one of your paintings is hiding over there on the uh, that you're working on. Oh yes, yeah, she is. We, we She's almost done. Shh, shh. We okay. won't talk about that. So, um, we did a ground, a very deep green, and the reason that I did that is because I feel like that will help us build up all the bright uh, kind of greens on top of that and give us that rich depth. Because really, green on green depends on value. Mm -hmm. So definitely we're going to have to get that. Um, we may do some white into the kids a little bit just to make sure things like our yellows and our bright colors feel very, very bright. So let's go ahead and do that early on. I'm going to take, um, da -da -da -da, do I have a cat's tongue out? I guess I will take my number four round just because I want to have some control. This is a number four round from the Art Sherpa line, but you can use any brush that you're using on this event to make sure that you have a little control over where it goes. So you're gonna see me here coming back in and maybe where I've got that bright yellow, right? Cause yellow is so transparent. Definitely help by uh, coming up here to the top of his head cause that's so lit up. And that will help us capture those light qualities when we go there. Hmm. And a little bit here on her head coming across. And even her little hoodie would be a good idea. We can always easily put some value by shading our yellow. But it's good when you know that a color you have is transparent, like Quinn Magenta or Thalo, and you need it to be very, very bright. This is a good way to get it. And many of you are noticing, like, the saturation of certain colors is really impactful for the end result of what you're doing. You really like that boot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Just really like this whole deal. Um, I, I, I like kids in rain gear. It makes me super happy. To, to be really frank, it, it does. It's an it's, it's interesting celebration of play. I, th I think it is. And I think kids can embrace things like weather in a way that sometimes adults forget to do. Yeah. I'm just bringing my umbrella in and getting that shape. And the reason I'm going to go ahead and make a little extra trouble for myself on the umbrellas, I really want that to also be at least bright here, maybe kind of on the top. So right here where I know I'm going to have it be a little bit brighter before I start shading those colors going down. That can always be sort of nice. So that's what I'm doing. And these are just, that's just a little touch to help you in those areas where you're like, man, that's going to be hard. Not anymore. That little prep work. So that's the thing about um, 
having economic paints is honestly sometimes I feel that those should be called professional paints because it feels like sometimes with more economic paints you need to be professional to make them really work because you've got to know a lot of stuff about your product <laughs> to get through and why sometimes I do encourage students to upgrade into better quality paint lines is because it's so much harder to overcome those kinds of challenges if you're not really familiar with a product. I'm going to get my number eight Cambridge. This is a bright brush. You can see that labeled right there. If ever you're out brush shipping, it's a bright brush. The size is right there, number eight. And this one is a mix of bristles and synthetic filaments. Okay, there, sorry, right there, the bright. He'll zoom in for you. So those are the words you're going to want to look for in a brush. Bright, numbers, and then fill here. Now you can find bristle brushes pretty easily, but what you're looking for is synthetic and bristle because acrylic is so hard on brushes. Let's begin by our uh, getting into our background. And what's lovely in the far, far background hmm. is it feels like it's almost a phthalo, right? I'm going to even add a little blue to this mix. A phthalo green, it's kind of blue-green. It's super saturated. Just, just a little so it shows. And so I'm going to come here and, and it's okay for that brighter color to be back here. I'm going to come around the kids with that. And I'm going to wiggle my brush around. Can you guys see me being loose and wiggly? Mm -hmm. In the series of paintings in Acrylic April, uh, we're working on painting looser and more expressively. Now, many artists are doing Acrylic April, and they may not be working on that. I'm just saying that's what we're doing in this class. But if you are like, no, that's not my, that's not my way. I do my own thing. That's, of course, okay. Now, I'm seeing some interesting topics come through on chat that I think okay. we could address. All right. Now. You, you know that as, an, as a beginning artist, we can be super critical of ourselves. We really can be. And the words that we choose to describe ourselves can really set us up in our journey. Mm -hmm. So we should really do, the, do our best to frame ourselves and our journey in a positive way, even when we're struggling, you know, to not be... You know, not to be too hard on ourselves and to realize that no one starts this knowing everything. Oh, everyone starts out a beginner. Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a law of art. Everyone starts out a beginner. And listen, here's a little inside tip. When you start painting, you know how you learn how to ride a bike, but you don't just necessarily get on a bike and ride away. You have to build up muscle memory and those muscle brain body skills. Art has that too. You, there's a whole period of time where you're just learning to teach your hand to control the brush. That has nothing to do with talent or ability or the future of your skill. That's just about you teaching your body a particular set of uh, activities it's supposed to do in the way that you want it to do. And that takes just a little minute. So give yourself a minute to work that out before you start to worry about the other stuff, I would say. As we're coming through here, the green gets a little brighter. So to brighten the green, I'm gonna take a little bit of our, our CAD yellow medium hue that we have over here. And I'm gonna come here and you can see it's just it's just a little bit more yellowed, right? Yeah. Not a big change, not too much. And this is where having a, a wonderful background is helpful to us. And I'm just loosely talking about some different little paint colors that I've got going on here in these in these plants. One of the nice things about putting in some brighter greens when you've got a rainy day is when plants get that bright rain, a lot of times they will green up. So being able to show that is a great way of also saying, hey, this is a particular time of year and this could be something that's happening. So just coming up here. And then as you know, we go up, we get more into our greens again. There you go. See, more into our green. It's a little different than that deep background green, but it's still into our green. So now we have green on green, don't we? But they're all different little zones of green. Just picked up some more phthalo. Green is always a value study. It's a, sometimes try to think of the green paint part of your painting as a monochromatic painting. That means you're just using one color. Similar thing happening over here, a lot more yellow. Kind of at this outer edge. Let's talk about that brighter yellow and these edges and little bits. That background. All around our little umbrella. And then again, as I come in, 
the green gets richer and more saturated. That's kind of lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Some little distant green bushes that we didn't work particularly hard for, but gave us a lot. Now, the next part of this, I'm going to get a little of my ultramarine blue, which is right here. Oh, it, in case, I, we usually go over the colors. Naples yellow, cad yellow medium, vermilion, magenta, titanium white, Mars black, ultramarine, phthalo green, th uh, uh, primary blue, burnt sienna. The exchanges for these are on the webpage. So if you, you're like, oh, what color could I exchange for this? That's all explained on the webpage. I like to hide the information there now. Yes. In a tricky, tricky way. So I am going to come here and start to add my distant little kind of grade. I need it even a little more grade. Grade brown. A little bit happening all through here. Because this is just the earth that they are that they're walking to. here you might see a little bit of it here peeking between the children now i'm going to put a little more of my all-terrain blue and grab some of my white and you'll see that kind of you really see the gray of the ground then and i'm going to come right here to the front of it and then maybe just along my river's edge. I just pulled some of my water out of my brush because it was just getting a little waterlogged for my taste. I'm going to just make sure that I have that here. So what am I doing? I'm lightening the edge. Maybe put a little bit of this out here. Show some some ground is up peeking out. So now we have a little bit of ground around our our kids, which is fantastic. It is terrific. And then, interestingly enough, we have this fabulous sort of water. And water is a mirror. Water is a reflection. So even though I'm going to put some phthalo blue into this, there's going to be a strong sense of green. Now, I'm going to play with color a bit to exaggerate the waterness of it. I'm going to come out here. And you can see I'm just sort of wiggling my brush. Look at that nice way of come along this little edge. The bank edge on the corner of my brush. You can talk about it back here. A little more green back here. So that's okay, right? That there's green in the water because there is what? Green in the water. And there's even a little brown and there's there's a lot of different little colors in the water because it's a fluid mirror. So this is a nice way to talk about the water. If I were trying to paint um, like something that was hyperrealism, I would just very carefully incrementally go through shade by shade. But I'm trying to paint expressively. So this is how I'm gonna get there. I like adding that little bit of blue in. And you can see this brightens this up and starts to talk about is the camera catching that? I can't tell. I think so. My eye is, but I know sometimes when it's dark it's, on dark. It is. Well, I can. So all we'll do is just. So I don't sure. know. If, well, I was going to say if I turn it, yeah. can everybody. What I, yeah, you definitely see it as you tilt it. But what I'll do also. That's, that's what I was offering to do. I wasn't needing you to move the camera. I was well, just like can, offering to tell. Hold on. I can. So I've added there. a little white to my brush and I'm going to just. Make sure I pump the little lights up a little bit on it. Kind of talk about these little ripples that are happening here. There's all this little activity in the water, right? That we're seeing. And, and these light, barely there ripples is a great way for me to start to talk about it. So how I do is I pick a direction. And I'm coming here and I'm, I'm thinking about how they are impacting the water. And I'm looking at the picture. So you see that their circles coming out from them. And then as the water moves into the bank, it comes back. And these are... Little things that you just sort of observe when you're painting or observe in the photograph and think, oh, that would, that would add something. That would be delightful. <laughs> right? So I'm going to let that have a dry for a second. And I think I'm going to face what I'm perceiving as maybe a more challenging part of the painting, <laughs> which is the umbrella. 
and my trick for this is going to be I'm going to grab some of my um, my red here and a little of my magenta because when you mix these together it kind of pulls the red into a deeper color and I'm going to come here to the top and on, with the corner of my brush even I'm going to just talk about that being a little more red. See how we're doing? Yeah. And then here at this point there's a little stripe so I can I can begin putting out the stripe. Let's get a little more pigment on the brush. When you have too much water in the brush, it can thin your pigment. So you got to watch for that. Bring it out. And then remember when you're doing your stripes to sort of follow the shape of your umbrella, as you do. And then as I'm going to come back, I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to get just a smidge of black, a smidge, to deepen it just a bit. To do what's called uh, toning it, shading it. Sorry, I'm so busy painting. I'm like, burnt my brain. Maybe a little more shade. So you see how we're darkening as we come back. Yeah, yeah, that's a little crazy. I might have lost, you know. So I think the things I'm going to be struggling with are keeping my stripes straight. <laughs> now I've got the shade on here already. So if I come in to my yellow, right? It's going to darken my orange. See how that's done? Yeah. Because the black's on there already. So I weirdly can come back underneath. Right here with that. Just a little kind of trick. And then. Get right into a brighter orange by taking my yellow and my red. And you can see mix a much brighter orange. And then right up there at the front, I can even get a little more yellow to that orange. And even maybe, see right there, highlight a bit. Just a touch. So you're just starting to see some of that shape and shadow. Now I've got some nice yellow happening. I can see that I've got to bring some of my orange. I'm going to grab some more of that here down a little bit because I might have gotten. A little high with my uh, red stripe, and that's okay, because I can always get right into the red, and even come over this red that I toned, moving that down. See how I did? And then if I want to show that that red's a little lighter, I think in this particular case I would get into my yellow, just to highlight the front of that red, just a bit to say that's got a little more sunlight on it. I think. Getting through, getting through. So the next two colors are two blues, interestingly enough. There's a very dark blue and another blue. I think that's interesting. It's two blues. So let's see if we got two little blues that we're going to do. So we'll do our, I think we'll do a primary blue. And then above it may be an ultramarine blue. So I'm gonna come, I think I'll come from the top. And I'll pull down. I'm just pulling down my little stripe, keeping within the shape of my umbrella. Where I want it to be darker, I'm going to grab some black and I'm going to shade it like we do. I really like this umbrella. Do you? Yeah. I was looking forward to painting this because it's an interesting challenge because it requires us to change colors a lot. And it requires us to shade, so that's always fascinating to me. I'm going to grab just a little bit of red on here. Because I can see that I need it. See how I did right there? Just to brighten that up. And I may even come back down here and just brighten that up a bit. Sometimes you just got to brighten it up. Oh, that's too full. That's what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, what's going on with my brush? It's so waterlogged. It's too full. You know. I'd like hey, to, Pumpkin, can you empty this out? This is too full. And, you know, Cinnamon, I'd, I'd like to just take a, take a minute to remind anybody who's... It's really good to go back to the beginning of the journey and watch those videos where we talk about setting up sacred spaces and talking to your loved ones about this is, you know, this journey that you're going to go on and making sure you find those, the support for that. And we have some really great videos that are at the very beginning of this that you guys can go check out on that. Yeah, there's a video about how to do a daily painting that really talks about, no, okay, can you fill it up to about here? It's too full. 
water. <laughs> My daughter wants me to have ample amounts of water. <laughs> so the reason that that's a big deal, if you're wondering, like, why does this lady care that there's water in her jar? The reason that it is is I'm trying to rinse out my brush, and I do want to thoroughly get it into the water so I can get that paint out vigorously. But if I go way up the handle, if you look at the depth of the jar, if I'm way up here, then all this water collects up the handle and begins to run down in a capillary effect and get back into my bristles. So even though I might rinse it and then, you know, go to wipe off the end, if I have a bunch of that water, I'll get in there and I'll over waterlog my brush. That's the only reason I even care. I just saw Miss Melody Lane cruise by. So I was Hi, like, Miss hey, Melody Lane. Always good to see our art friends come visit. She's so talented and amazing. You like creativity and crickets and paper. She is your girl. She does so many fun projects. Really talented human being. And she's probably like, what? <laughs> but no, it's seriously true. She is just very talented and sweet. And if you've been thinking about doing any kind of paper crafting, especially around uh, crickets, you've got to check out her stuff. And also, she's a really cool art studio. You should just check out her art studio. I added a little white to my ultramarine because I am tinting it. Oh, <laughs> I was like, I uh, don't, don't pop quiz me, please. Oh, I'm not pop quizzing. I don't want pop quiz me. Mm, well, pop quizzes are not fun. I do sure. not. I, you know, here's the thing. I have an interesting deal that I have, which is that I know a lot about my art product. I'm making a very light green and then I'll make it dark, darker as I go down. And I'm, you know, I'm really into art product. Like, I think it's super fun. It's like my favorite. But if I get the sense that somebody's quizzing me to trip me up, it super annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> you know... I think not like to ask thing. a question. I love questions. If somebody is like, there's this and this, and it's so confusing. I don't know what it is. I love to answer that. But I don't know if you've ever had somebody. This happens a lot in Star Trek conventions. Yeah. I think that's where I got the feeling about it, where, like, other people who have fandom will quiz you to make sure you're enough of a fan. Well, and what, why, there's something really weirdly human there about that happens. About that. Where it's like, we all don't mind and we want to help and answer questions but nobody wants to feel like you're being judged or, or quizzed tested. yeah <laughs> tested. it's like well <laughs> wait a minute who so, had, you know i would not test john i would not do that to him because i wouldn't like it and he wouldn't like it so i don't mm. do that never quiz you babe all right i'm gonna add a little of my yellow here well, i didn't think you were i oh, mean okay. just in general that's like you know nobody loves it nobody loves it like whether you're at an art convention or people are just walking up to you and they're asking you like, well, how'd you do that? I That's, love that. Yeah. How do I do that? Like, I'll answer that all day or like ask me questions. I love answering art questions. I if, really do. Like yeah. that's fine. But if they're but looking you know down I mean? their nose at you saying, well, how did, how did you do that? And you're like, well, <laughs> step off, yo. I don't need to talk to you. <laughs> well, I th and again, I think that comes from like, you know, and, and I'm, uh, Trekkies are really in general sweet people. Oh, huh, yeah. No, in general. But, of course, you know, fandom expresses in different ways. I have things that I'm a fan of. And I'll tell you, I fan out pretty hardcore. Yeah. So I've got that. I feel like I've got that little umbrella in. Now it's a little more fussy and detailed than we normally do, but I, I, I feel like it was worth it. I'm going to get my number four round here, and I'm going to treat myself to adding the little balls. At the base of the umbrella bits, because I just like them. You know what else I love about the the, the fans hmm. is they stick together. Oh, I just have to say that's always fun to see. And they support one another. I, I like I love how our sherpets support each other in their journeys with you know, and just watching chat and listen to each other's. You know, you guys, I love you guys. I appreciate all the support you provide each other. It's amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. So I put those little yellow bits in there because I felt like that would be nice and that could that could help. I'm going to grab a little bit of my black and blue. And I do want to paint loosely, but I just feel like I will enjoy having a little bit of the ribbles. You know how I feel about ribbles. And I'm just taking that sort of darker color just to talk about the ribbles a little bit. A bit. 
see. Now we can see the ribbles. Just wanted to see the ribbles. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of my white and, and maybe even some of my yellow just to just to get control. But I just want a very light color. And I'm going to come to the edge of the front of this and the edge of that. Can you guys see that? I'm just picking up a highlight there. Just to exaggerate that space a little. It's nice to do. Okay, back into my big boy. Back into my big boy. Now, at some point, they're gonna, before you go, uh -huh. we're going to have to show off your shirt t-shirt. because Oh, okay. Like, they're like, oh, where's that? I was like, but it's well, in, you can get this at the store. Yeah. Well, it's in the this store, is honestly. the forged in color shirt. So I'm taking my Naples and my cad yellow hue, and I'm mixing those together and getting myself sort of this interesting banana mid-range color. And I'm going to come inside my parka hoodies, as you do. With some of that color and it's uniquely this this particular like banana blue like yellow is really unique to the inside of the hoodie and did attract me to this piece like this piece like i really wanted it to be my halfway through piece because this type of loose figure painting it's challenging for people and it would be a good place for us to see how we're doing now i'm going to take a little of my black and i'm going to mix it in can you see how i'm doing and so we're shading that, right? It's not, it's not a huge impact, but we definitely want to see it. And then we're going to come in and add just a few of these little wrinkle shadows that we've got. Just so we can show that that's happening. There we go. You see their little wrinkles kind of happening there? I'm going to rinse out and let that dry for a second because I want to pop a highlight on it. Green. So the green on the jacket's awesome because it's just our green with a little bit of white in it. <laughs> hey, how convenient is that? We don't have to do any crazy mixes to get there. And so I'm going to mix a little white into my phthalo green. And I'm going to come here and catch this jacket. As you do. As we all do, a little more green into it. We're going to come up to the front and catch our. I'm going to assume because they're matched that they're probably siblings. Not that best friends don't sometimes match because let's be honest, they do. Best friendships are a big deal at any age. Right? Best friends are a super treasured, treasured thing. I'm bringing that stripe up in there. So we're now starting to see the. The jacket and I can come into my green you can tone it with a you can shade it with a little bit stop saying toning oh wait yeah you can shade it with a little bit of your black the reason I was thinking there is because I'd added white earlier so it wouldn't have been accurate description of the activity we were doing because of the white I'm gonna let that dry a little bit or actually I'm gonna hit it with my hair dryer real quick okay yeah don't actually hit it with your hair dryer. Just, you know, put it on the lowest heat setting and let some air get on there and quickly dry that down. The reason you don't want to use heat is because it can soften the acrylic and it can also cause color shift and things like that. But mostly the heat is not good. Hmm? I was just telling them not to do heat on there because it can make it soft and color shift and, you know, all the stuff. And listen, do. guys, there's a lot of bad information out there about what is safe in paint and what is not. Always read your safety labels on your paint. Uh, manufacturers do not want anything to happen to you, so they will label them, and they are being accurate and honest. Because um, they want you to be a painter for many years to come, and there's nothing sadder than losing an artist to uh, studio issues. Right? We don't like it. None of us like that. We don't want that to ever happen to our friends. So be sure you read that and realize that um, just because you see somebody do it on YouTube or even in a class, it doesn't mean that it's safe. You know, a lot of people will like use heat guns or they use torches on their paint and that is not safe. Not even a little bit safe. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that happens when your paint is heated. And that's why we started really kind of talking about it during the hair drying element of our painting is so that people could just know. They might not know. I'm going to add some of that darker green right there. I'm just trying to get our little values worked out. 
So we're starting to see some wrinkles, right? Some wrinkles. Now I'm going to get back in and get my green and white. Make sure we've got that here. Oh, that's great, isn't it? There we go. This is happening now. A little green stripe with a that's there. She's got a little more of the light green to the outside, so that's good. This seems to be pretty uniformly distributed through. Pick that up the back a little bit. Oh, I like that. So once I get that, I can come back and hit the shadows under the hoodies, but that was that important part that I was going to get. Now the next important part I'm going to get is I'm going to go right into my phthalo blue. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to work the sleeve. This right here is pure phthalo. Look at that. Painting very carefully around. Kind of a deeper value, right? I'm going to come on this side of the hoodie. This is this part of the hoodie stripe. There is quite a lot of a dark phthalo that comes across here and then under the waistband. And there's a little bit here at the inside leg. Back of her skirt is probably the darker phthalo. I see a little bit right here. There we go. We got a little, we got a little of that going. What I can do as soon as I have that on is then I can add some white. Right? And get this nice lighter color that we've got going on. So there's a light stripe, right? I'm putting that right there. Just that little bit of light stripe. But I'm still going to come to the top of the shirt a bit with this blue. And the reason that I am is I do want it to have some, some form and not just be the stripes. I want it to also be the values. There we go. I'm going to bring some of this lighter color across the hoodie. Can you guys see that? Yeah. And I'm going to take some of this mid lighter value and come right here on the pants. A little darker than that, I think. Bringing that in on the pants. Also on her skirt. And then to the outside right there. That's nice. And I can come in and get just a little extra highlight even past that. Hadia wants to give you an art high five so it's very pretty nails. Oh, thank you. I have to say, you've been getting a lot of comments on those lately. A little sparkliness. I've been having a little fun. I'm going to add a little highlight right too. here. There you go. On her little skirt, I think there's a little highlight. That's something I don't think that, that people get enough permission to do. What? Just take care of yourself on stuff like that. It, it, we truly do not. Now, let's get some skin tone going. So we're going to take our pad yellow and a little mix of our magenta and our red, as we do. A little more magenta, and then you just get some white into it. See where we're at. A nice base. Good place to start. Because you're just trying to find a place to start. Add a lot more white. There we go. Now that's probably the lightest part of our skin tone. Grab a little of your burnt sienna. That, that just knocking it back will really help you. There we go. So. Take some of the skin tone and put it. Right here. Put some right here. And it's even got a little more magenta, I think, even underneath there. So I'm going to magenta that part of it. Go behind the neck. Just start to lay that in. We don't need a lot, right? We're just... Put the little ears in. I'm tap a little bit for an ear. You're, you could switch to a you could. small round or 
you could switch to a small round, but I'm trying to paint loose. I'm trying to get out of the habit of painting every detail. So I am going through the trouble of that struggle, if that makes a sense. So here I am, I've got my pink on here and I may come in and now I'm gonna shade it. There was shading our skin tone a bit. It's still our skin tone. And I may have to switch to my round. I don't want to, but I might have to. Don't want to, but I might have to. And I think I have to. I'm just not able to control the brush enough today. All right. Irksome. But it happens. What can you do but roll with it? Mm. So just trying to get my little base skin tone mixed out here again. There we go, Back into my white. Pretty pink, I like that. Come do the ears. Ears always will have a little bit more pink to them, I feel. Some of this, his neck's a little bit lighter up underneath there. And we'll get her legs just in a little bit better. I would have loved to have just done this as one little brush stroke, but I think I'm still moving towards that space. And also, even for this, I think I would have had to size down my brush. Yeah. Now, I over thickened her leg here. And so what I'm going to want to do is come back in with my green and my blue. And I know we're a little bit slower than usual today. But these guys are a little more involved. Yeah. And just noticed you're over a little at uh, 36, 37 minutes. Yeah. But we're going to get through it quicker than maybe we've ever done anything like this before. So that's really the goal. Yeah. This is, you know. So I've got my little lighter skin tone here. All right, so let's get a little bit of lighter. You can always add a little yellow to it. And we come to the back of the neck right here. Highlight that a bit. I'm gonna highlight maybe the outside of an ear a bit. I'm gonna hit the back of her calf here just a smidge. And maybe right here, just a smidge. Now her hand's an interesting element, so I'm gonna get into my darker kind of little skin space here. I am not trying to paint every little thing about her hand that anyone has ever seen, because I would be lost and overwhelmed in short order, right? Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to capture the value in the shape of what I'm seeing. If I lose it, I can always just come back and pull something in. A little more pink, white. You can always yellow it up. Just making this outside. So we're brightening the outside and letting the bottom part be more in shadow. And the reason that we're bothering with that, get really a lot more magenta with a bit of a sh shading of black. The reason that we're bothering with that is that it's going to really help us with very little talk about that this is a hand. And that some of it's in shadow. Some of it's more in light. So we're not having to overwhelm ourselves. Underneath the skirt. I'm down with a bit of a shadow here. Because the skirt casts a shadow, doesn't it? Get a little more black on there just entirely. Just right underneath that. There we go. So that's where we got that. That's nice and shadow. Got this gorgeous little shadow color. I think that's pretty dark too. So now I can come here and do the shading under the hair, which I think is going to give the back of his neck the shape that we're going to 
need it to have because with very little we have to really say a lot i'm going to grab a little bit of black come behind the ears a bit exaggerate that space some as you do back into my little mix So the hair we're going to do is going to be our yellow and a little bit of our burnt sienna. You can always put a little black into it. It's interestingly enough, that really is a good way to get into a dirty blonde. We're going to start to talk about these wonderful little curls. That are happening at the back of the head. A little more brown, a little more black. See how deep that is? Just right through here. The brown and black, okay, I haven't rinsed out. And come right on over to her hair as a base. And that can be the base of her hair. So we're starting to get that in. As I rinse that out, I'm going to come back in and be like, you know, I've got my yellow. I can add a little more yellow to my blonde mix that's over here, which is the brown and the black and the yellow. I can even get a little of my maples in there. And we can begin to lighten this up. And be sure that you're, you know, you're pulling little bits of it down to talk about those little curls that might catch highlights here. And you can see right away that having a little yellow, a little white underneath there was super helpful. Now I'm going to get right into my white. See how I'm doing? Right into my white. I see. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start catching this like outer edge. Maybe put some highlights there. A few little highlights there. Top of the head, so much lighter. You think? Dip my brush in water, swirl it around. You can see we're starting to build up that fabulous, fabulous mop of hair. Now I need it yeah. to dry for a second. Definitely, definitely need it to dry. I'm going to get back into, get right into my brown and yellow. Let's add a little bit of our red into it this time. Isn't that lovely? Coming here and making sure that she's got a little bit of a little highlight. It's happening. Into that space. Right here at the top. Woohoo! You can always come back with some brown if you need to. And pull it up in there. Where you've got to have that. Mm. Now I'm going to take some of my Naples yellow and some white. Come along the top of the hoodie.
and catch the brightest highlights that I have there. You guys see the brightest highlights? Mm. Sometimes it's the highlight showing that helps us see the little sh subtle shadows that we might have going. You got to catch a few of those little highlights to show people about the shadow. There's a, there's a lot going on in this painting. There, it, it is, but then you can also, you can always find your way into simplifying it. Now I'm going to take a little of my yellow and my red, and I'm going to make my first orange here for the, for the jacket. And I'm going to come here and just go right over all of this with the orange. As you would. Come all right here with my orange. Right down. Isn't that nice? Now I feel like his neck got a little thick on me. So I'm going to take a little of my background color. Like my deep, deep background color. I'm going to come in here and very carefully make sure. That is a little bit trimmed in. It's a subtle thing, but it's a big deal. And I just want to make sure that he doesn't look too thickly in it. Because <laughs> that's the thing that can happen to you, right? You're just painting along and things just they take a little deviation. And that's how you go back in and get them, get them worked out. I'm letting that orange dry. I'm going to just grab just my pure red. And come right there with my pure red and then over the top of this jacket with that red stripe. Are you guys still doing okay? I we they are. Okay. John is John is totally typing. I know and he's communicating. We got the mods. I just want to know like emotionally if you guys are feeling all right. Are you finding yourself in the in the piece? I'm just everywhere I had this sort of red, I'm gonna just put this in. That's sort of nice, isn't it? Come right here with the red. I'm going to have a thing. And then I'll come on this outside of his little jacket arm. Jacket arm has a little bit of a red that peeks through, doesn't it? And that's nice to include. I'm going to touch some more red here to the outside edge. It creates almost like a highlight because it's more saturated. You see those reds now? Yeah. And that's going to be the big thing is just making sure we really see our reds. Go ahead and get some of my blue. Come right here. Just make sure that we've got that nice area. And I'll reinforce anywhere I felt like needed a little more blue. Little blue and black here. Show the curve of the pants. And also I'm going to take this moment with my blue and black and make a nice little shadow under my hoodie. Can you see my shadow? I do it in both places. Little blue and black. Can you see the shadows under the hoodies? If you can't, you're going to come back and get your green darker than the highlights, so a lot more green to the white. And then all you got to do is change the value of that, and then you should be able to see it better. There we go. So by lightening that up, I helped you see the shadow underneath it. And it's about finding those spaces. So I just rinsed out, and I'm getting a little more black. More black. Come right down on that crease there. You can come across here. Sometimes I find those little touches are helpful. I'm going to get into some fresh water because I need the last colors to be pretty bright. 
So first things, my bright orange, right? And if you look, there's even a little <gasps> very convenient and helpful white to it. <laughs> so I'm going to come right here and show the wrinkle highlight. There's a little bit coming down here. So that one's a little bit thicker. There's the wrinkling highlights. Orangeness. Little red. Little yellow. Pop that in just to make that. That bright orange. See right here, I feel like I could put some of that in there. Orange is hard to keep orange. Why is that? Unless you have really good pigments like pyrrole or pure cadmium. There's, there's some oranges that are fantastic, but that's why really, really high-end paints sometimes become very necessary. So my yellow here is toned with a little bit of my uh, brown, or in a, I'm a smidget uh, with my black. There's some white in it. So we're shading here. And I'm going to come in and start my boots. Yeah. Get these yellow boots. Because then I can get into the fun of the water reflection. All the fun, all the fun. Coming around the edge, coming around the edge. Right up to the water here. Got the beginnings of our yellow. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little of my black. And come underneath and show that heel. I maybe talk a little bit about this outside edge. Like we do. Shading the inside. See how we're doing? Bending that a bit. Again, on the inside of the leg, shading it just a touch. Just a touch, because we're just trying to see it. And then we got our wonderful, fabulous, like, pink red boots, right? So we're going to get a little of our red and lots of our pink. Now, the wonderful thing about magenta is, in this case, it's also transparent. We could have gotten and done white underneath. And the reason that I chose to just go over the green is I realized that the green would shade it. And then I could just come in with some white and my pure pink over the top of those areas. And just show this bright, cheerful pink highlight. You guys see that? And another little one here. It shows her pink boots. There it goes. So her pink boots are now kind of a thing. I'm going to grab some pure pink to the outside. Pure pink? Pure pink. Just make sure that her galoshes feel galoshy. Her galoshes feel galoshy? You need to feel galoshy. I don't know. His look like submarines. They do, right? I'm going to take like... a little yellow and a little white, and we're just going to get a very bright yellow going with a little bit of white in it. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to pretend my galoshes were submarines. Putting some of that to the outside. With my very bright. Because that's what you got to do. Find the deepest puddles, right? I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I agree with you. <laughs> You're like, I don't know. It needs more yellow. <laughs> it needs more yellow. Let's go right into my yellow here. Just playing with those, just getting those boots up. Now I know I've got to get some stripes and stuff in there. But I'm going to be a little more like, it's just not really feasible to like do every little stripe I feel like right now. So I'm going to just come across here and here with this. And then I'll come up with the red stripe when I come up, when I'm going to come up. 
while I'm here and everything's drawing so you know you can see the color shift and everything and come through and make sure that the colors that you need to have saturated are whenever you have them if ever you have to you know tap them up this is a good time to get into your hair I'm just using my Naples yellow and a lot of white and get that last little needs to be super highlighted highlight that really brings out his hair you should be able to see it a little more now yeah and then with hers i'm just going to come almost into the yellow with some white and i might grab just a smidge of the brown smidge i said to myself I'm looking to give her some reflections. Right here across her hair. And the outside edge. So she's got a little sheen in her hair. Now, back to the big brush because this part will be fun. It will be fun. I'm going to take a little of my pink and white. I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of those little reflections going out. Oh my, it just went blue. Ha <laughs> ha The thing is, is the water will reflect. And this is where a painting like this starts to be wonderful. All the color that is above it. And then all of a sudden, this world becomes super duper magic. I think another, we can get even to a, like maybe a bright blue. Put some of that in there. Always fun. How's that looking? That's actually looking really cute. We're painting some stuff today. Get some yellow. Do you love the reflections behind them, guys? Yeah, I think that the reflections are really cool. I do too. I do too. So we've got some blue and stuff here. I think while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and come up the back of the boot with maybe that red stripe because it's so signature of that piece. A little red stripe coming out the back. And I'll go ahead and put some of that right in the water. And then I'm going to start to add the zzz. Zzz. So I like we can put a little bit of this here. The umbrella also, you gotta realize is gonna be like putting some color down. Oh yeah. Because it's colorful and has some things to say. A little bit of the green and blue together, making sure there's not too much moisture in my. It's almost like a kind of a little sky color. I'm just talking about a little bit of the reflections that are happening around them. See, this is like the little water energy that's going on. Wiggling that out. Now I'm going to get a little more white on my little brush here. And I just use the corner and I'm going to splash up some splashes. Anything that. You can see the, the churning. And the activity of these two sweethearts. And go ahead and just get a little bit of the bead of the pink and come back and just make sure that boot is
trimming that in. Just white. Nope, that was too much. <laughs> and that'll happen sometimes. Like you'll be trying to touch your brush into something and it just is not as delicate as you would like. But you can always trim it back to where it is. So never feel like you are stuck. There we go. We're there, guys. I think we have visited this idea and this thought. I would. It's really nice. I mean, like, this is. They just pop, pop, pop right out there at the very end. Look, you just. It came in just an hour. We're at one hour and one minute. I think that's not bad for this. No. This was not a complicated bad at all. piece. There's a lot going on. It's tough to paint loose. There's a lot happening. Get a little signer. Yeah. Person. Let them know that your maker's mark. Put that in there. I'm excited about the wave tomorrow. That's going to be a nice chill day. The wave. The chill day. All right. And then we needed a chill day after today. Here we go. Oh. Just a, a little study. A little, a little exploration of a rainy day with two kids. It's okay to paint this tight. It's okay to get all those details in and really like harden up all the lines, but it's also okay to be just like loose and expressive and say this just feels like the rainy day I saw. There isn't a right, there isn't a wrong. There's just your way through. Everyone who's doing they acrylic April is amazing. They wanted to see your shirt before you go. Oh yeah. yeah. It's at the Teespring store. If you see. check down there, there's like little merchy things going by, and you just go by the store and you can get our merch. There's a whole bunch of things. There's a bunch of <laughs> acrylic April shirts and things. So whatever you're celebrating, we've got some stuff. Be good to yourself. Be, you have the egg card? <laughs> Do I have it? She's so funny. Do I have this egg card? Right Be good now? to yourself. <laughs> Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.